Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Finoff. Excellent. Um, we are moving on. I want to give a shout out to Deirdre Chatlos from Princeton who joined us today on the, uh, on the presentation. Up next is our brand new Chief of Athlete Services. He's been with us since November 2009, Mr. Bahati Van Pelt. Bahati spent, um, spent more than two decades uh, in the National Football League, leading the Players Trust for the National Players Association, also worked with the Jacksonville Jaguars and Atlanta Falcons, serving more than 14,000 former NFL players. Um, it's uh, our pleasure to have Bahati join us this morning. Thanks, Bahati. Hello, everyone. My name is Bahati Van Pelt, and I'm the Chief of Athlete Service for the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee. Today, I'm going to give you just a brief overview about the Athlete Services Division and how the USOPC is engaging our athletes to better serve and support them, not only doing their competition, but when they transition out of their competitive sport. The first slide you'll see is just an overview of the athlete services. We're going to start with our ACE program. So you can see this is just a breakdown of ACE by the numbers, giving you a full understanding of what we're doing in the career and education space. A couple of the numbers that I do want to highlight in this slide is you'll see on the third bullet, the $2.4 million in the education BIK and the grants awarded. This gives our athletes an opportunity to continue their education either while they're competing or when they decide to transition out of their sport. Uh, you'll also see that we've developed an in-state tuition program in Colorado and Utah, and we are looking to expand that to other states so our athletes can take advantage uh, of being residents while they're training in specific states. Uh, you'll see there are 83 job placements. It is important for many of our athletes to have other avenues of income while they're continuing to train and compete. Uh, 104 athletes receive one-on-one -on -one career coaching. This is important. As we all know, it gives athletes an opportunity to talk specifically about the areas that are important to them and help them identify career opportunities outside of their sport. Uh, and then the last bullet, uh, just touch points, increasing engagement opportunities for ACE to talk one-on-one -on -one or in small or large groups with our athletes to help them understand the resources that are available to them as a Team USA athlete. On the next slide is just some continuing numbers. You'll see we've broken down between career, uh, education, funding. The Simon Grants program is a program that helps athletes from a need base a perspective so that they can address some of the financial challenges that they may have while they're continuing to compete. This is an area where there is a focus, especially during the COVID-19 crisis and how can we best assist our athletes in these areas, understanding the financial impact that this crisis has had on our athlete population. The Pivot Program is a great opportunity for athletes to think about their identities outside of their sport and gives them a window and some insight into what it would look like for them once they are no longer competing. And then during this time, as we know, with the extension of the tax deadline for U.S. citizens, this gives us an opportunity to work with our athletes to make sure that they are preparing their taxes correctly, that they are thinking through what their expenses would be, uh, and then making sure that they get their filings in on time uh, and any refunds that they may uh, receive from the federal government or state and local government. On the next slide, I'll touch a little bit on our athlete outreach and engagement department. Uh, this is really our front facing department where it allows us to actively engage with our athlete population. Uh, two big areas, two big groups that we spend a lot of time making sure that we are connected to is the AAC, which is the Athlete Advisory Council, and then the USOPC uh, Alumni association. Uh, these are two critical groups for us when it comes to having direct touch points with our athletes 
and then also making sure that there's a representative body so that we can hear the questions and concerns that our athletes may have and how we can best address uh, those concerns and provide solutions for the needs that they have. Uh, you'll see the bullets where it breaks down. We also are included the athlete marketing piece, uh, working with the representatives of our athletes when it comes to providing additional engagement opportunities and financial opportunities for them with partners and sponsors. Uh, centralized athlete communications. This is something that we've learned a lot about this through the COVID-19 crisis on how best to communicate with our athletes, provide information that they need, but just, in, just as importantly, make sure that we're hearing directly from them so that we can answer their questions and get them the information that is needed. And then uh, making sure that athletes have access to all information we've developed uh, FAQs for athletes to be able to uh, go to to get their questions asked and then also have an email inbox so that they can make sure that their questions will get to the right people and then we can get them the answers that are needed. So these are lessons that we're learning throughout the COVID-19 crisis that we know will serve us well as we increase and improve our engagement and outreach to our athlete population. On the next slide, it's an overview about our alumni relations. This is a group that plays a critical role when it comes to uh, not only what they went through in their experience and being able to provide a connected community around the shared experience of competing in the Olympics or Paralympics, uh, but then also uh, mentorship or guidance, especially during this time where athletes have a disruption and understanding how to best utilize this group to be a resource for those athletes as they think through what uh, the next year and a half looks like as they prepare for Tokyo. So uh, there's a lot of engagement that is done with this group. Uh, we're excited about some of the areas where we've increased the engagement improvement and looking forward to working more closely with this group in the future. Now we'll move on to athlete safety, which is another department that rolls up under the athlete services division. Uh, this is critical and the most important thing that we do, which is make sure that there's an environment for our athletes to compete uh, safely. Uh, you'll see that athlete safety really is broken down between emotional, physical, and sexual misconduct and abuse. Uh, we work collaboratively with the U.S. Center for Safe Sport to make sure that there's an atmosphere where athletes feel that they are competing safely and they also have uh, resources or ways to reach out uh, if they do have concerns in those areas. Uh, we also have internally our USOC OPC uh, Athlete Safety Department. Uh, where they do have jurisdiction over uh, different complaints uh, or things that rise to that nature, uh, including our training centers in Lake Placid and in Colorado Springs. Uh, so like I said before, this is a collaborative effort that is undertaken between us and the Center for Safe Sport. And then there's also the NGB uh, collaboration and coordination that occurs between the USOPC and the governing bodies. The next slide is just a continuation, just gives a little more breakdown into how uh, you can report or athletes can report to the USOC Office of Athlete Safety, uh, how you can connect with the US Center for Safe Sport, uh, and then it gives a breakdown of the levels of escal escalation uh, when it comes to this particular area. And then last but not least, I will end with sports medicine. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Fenoff, who you heard from earlier, uh, has come in and even though he's been focused mainly around the COVID-19 crisis and the things we need to do to keep our athletes and our uh, overall staff uh, safe and well during this time. Uh, our 
uh, sports medicine team is still working to ensure that once things are back up and running, that we have uh, an atmosphere and an environment where athletes can come in and be taken care of from a health and wellness and physical standpoint uh, and making sure that we are up and running and ready to uh, accomplish what we want to do, which is get our athletes to the starting line uh, as healthy and ready to go uh, for their competition as possible. Um, so I, this concludes all of the areas that roll up under the Athlete Service Division. Uh, I do want to highlight just one more thing within the sports med that is not just about uh, the physical, but it is also about how we provide resources when it comes to mental health and wellness so that our athletes are uh, holistically taken care of uh, from a sports medicine standpoint. Uh, so hopefully this gate gives you just a brief overview of the Athlete Service Division uh, and then the different areas that make up our athletes first uh, mentality and responsibilities from the USOPC staff and the NGBs and the movement as a whole. Uh, so thank you for your time. Hope you enjoy the rest of the webinars and conversations and please don't hesitate to reach out to us in athlete services if you have any questions or want additional information thank you